Morning, it's Simon. Today I wanted to talk about how you choose activities and sports programs for your kids. So as parents, what due diligence do you need to put in place? Well, last night I listened to a podcast with Des Ryan and Gordon from Parents in Sport. And I don't think you'll hear a more sensible discussion about how you choose a strength and conditioning program for kids. And I'll link that to the, to the notes and to the content I shared today. Within that program, the first um, question was, well, how do, you, how do you choose a program? And qualifications came out first. Later in the discussion, values and the development of, of a sport over an activity um, came into the discussion as well. And I know that when you put that question into a group of coaches, there's discussion around whether qualifications is the most important, whether experience outweighs qualifications, so time in the job, or whether values is most important, so trust and honesty. And, and, and when you speak to coaches, there, there's a variety of answers. That isn't helpful for a parent. So I'm going to suggest that you put one thing at the center of a program, and that is your child. It becomes a child-centric program. Now, when you do that, the experiences that your child gets and how they feel becomes paramount. And this might seem obvious, but perhaps we choose programs based on, well, they're, they're, they're qualified, perhaps they, um, they've coached in a professional sport, or perhaps um, you want your kid to learn football. So you choose those. But when you, when you reverse that back and put it, the child at the center, then conflicts of interest around financials. So if programs are holding kids in place and doing strength and conditioning programs three or four times a week, simply because they want their children in, in the gym or in the, in, the, in the program that they're in, and it creates a conflict of interest. And again, with sport, if a football club, and I use football as an example, is holding kids in and, and they're not paying attention to what else that child does in the week, then that's a conflict of interest. So when we put values at the center of a program, what we value, so child-centric, then we change the order in which we do things. We look at what other activities our child is doing. We have an interest in if they play football, then do they also throw? Do they play netball, perhaps? Do they play basketball? Do they bounce the ball? Do they jump? Do they do, um, do they hit? Do they play tennis? We become interested in what else our child does. And we're not just interested in the thing that we deliver. We're, we become interested in what the child is doing. And the same for activities. So the, the movement options that that child has, what else are they doing that week? Do they have free play? Are they allowed to just go and play and make games up for themselves? Or are they in a regimented program all week? So when we put values at the center, we begin to examine our potential conflicts for interest. Now, remember that around 80% of all physical coaches, physical trainers are freelance. Remember that most sports are membership driven and are promoting their sport. There's a conflict, potential conflict of interest. So when we are putting choices together for parents, we should be very clear about the values that we have within our club. And if they are simply intentional st statements, they are decorations on a wall like certificates and they're not actively being used, then we clearly can do something about that as parents. And we can choose other programs that are clearly demonstrating that we're putting children at the center of our activities and all of our interests. And we're very clear in, in, in what we value and how we do things, how we act and how we, how we behave. Um, I will share some notes on this um, at the bottom together with the podcast, which was a very sensible discussion. But I, to wrap it up, qualifications, experiences or values. Well, values drive your behavior. Qualifications suggest competency, but if you don't act on your competency because your environment is not conducive to that, qualifications don't matter. Neither does experience, because you can experience a environment, you can, you can experience many things and still not learn. 
So what is at the center? Your child is at the center, the values of the program are at the center, and do they match? Do they match what you want to deliver for your children? The experiences you want them to have and how you want them to feel. I hope that makes sense and I hope that is useful.